So we are going to continue talking about quadratic word problems. It's awesome that you guys can do this now. You, you're, you're outrageously powerful in what you can do now without realizing it, right? And just the word problems that we did last night on vertical motion model, I mean, it's, it's will you use it? I don't know. You probably won't. Mo like a, more than half of you probably will never use it in your lifetime. So what? It's cool to know it, right? And you're getting smarter by learning it, right? Your brain, they, that's totally a proven fact. Every time you learn a new thing, your brain and your, your neurons and the dendrites and everything are growing longer and together and becoming intertwined. And so you're actually literally getting smarter. So that's awesome. And so that means you'll be, be able to approach real life problems in the world in a, from a smarter viewpoint, a vantage point. You'll have a way to, a deeper knowledge of how to solve problems, okay? Um, <coughs> I think this stuff, I've, to be honest with you, I've never used this in real life. And I've used it in lots of math classes, right? I, I don't consider that real life. But I love that I know how to do it. I, it's, I love that it's so easy. And it makes so much sense to me. And it will to you guys, too. It's really, it's really a pretty awesome thing. Um, <coughs> so <coughs> the vertical motion model was based on gravity, right? So you throw a rock up into the air. And gravity, you know, there's a vert initial vertical velocity and a starting height, probably right here where my arm is, so figure five feet, right? And, you know, and it models that, that other vertical motion model, right? <coughs> well, sometimes you don't have those things. It's not like you're throwing something in the air. Sometimes you actually have a bridge that has a, a parabola in it, right? That parabola doesn't care about gravity, right? It doesn't have to, it's not trying to mimic the gravity. You don't need the negative 16 t squared kind of thing, right? You just have a parabola. Parabolas could be any size, right? They can be really, really wide. They can be really, really skinny, right? They can be anything. And so <coughs> some word problems, they actually give you a formula that shows you the parabola. Right? So, by the way, you have to really pay attention to this one. It's going to show you a formula that you're going to use, right? Now, one thing that's so important is to understand how simple this is. There's only two types of questions that they can ask for these kind of problems. Literally, only two kind of questions. Okay, two types of questions. I'm going to write them right here. Two types of questions. You can ask one, the questions that you guys already know, that you've been do, working on last yesterday, right? Last night. Find the what? The zeros. In other words, make h equal to zero and find x, right? Find the zeros. Find where the soccer ball hits the ground. Find where the porpoise lands back into the water. Find where the arrow lands on the ground, right? Those are the zeros. That's it. I mean, there's not hard. You just set it equal to zero and either use the quadratic formula or factor out the greatest common factor, do whatever you need to, you find an answer for t, right? That's the first type of question you can get. The second type of question you can get is how high? Right? How high did the ball go? How high did the arrow go? What is that? If you have a parabola, here are the zeros. Where's the highest point? What's it called? What? The vertex. The vertex. The vertex. So that's the only other option is how high. And that is find the vertex. Find vertex. So it's pretty easy to figure out which one you're doing. If you're doing finding the zeros, you all know how to do that, right? You set equal to zero, you factor it, and you solve for the unknown, right? Easy, easy peasy. This we haven't done in a while. But we, you did it when you were graphing, when you were learning to graph these. How do you find the vertex? What's 
the axis of symmetry formula? Yeah, yeah, okay, so you've got the axis of symmetry formula. This is the first step, A step. Axis symmetry formula, and which is x equals negative b over 2a. And I always draw my graphs right where I need to write, don't I? All right, and then b, what's the next step? That gives me my x of my vertex. Oh, and, then you plug it in. and then I plug it in. Plug x in. Plug x in. In. Right? Find y. Right? In this case, I call it, instead of y, I'm calling it f of x. Same thing. The same thing. That's just called function notation. f of x. Okay? Don't let that scare you. It's just the same thing as a y. All right? That's it. Do you guys make, does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. It's so easy if you understand that. You're, all you're ever, ever asking, are they asking me to find the zeros when it hits the ground? Or are they asking me to find the height? maximum height. That's the vertex. That's it. Piece of cake. All right. So now let's look at this. The height above the water level of a curved arch support for a bridge can be modeled by that. Okay. Let's draw our bridge. Can I erase the, our two types of questions now? You guys all written that down? If you haven't written that down, it's really key. Have you written that down? Can you do that? I think I'm going to do that. So I'll just draw it over here. Where, how far can I go? Eh. Maybe I can get in there. Nah, I don't think so. Okay, so we got a bridge, right? Bob, lovely bridge. Oh my God. This is the bridge arch support, right? And this is the water, right? And here's the sailboat. Oh dear. <laughs> is it going to no, Where's my artist? Henry! No. I need my artist. Oh well, anyways, you got that's the sailboat, right? Okay, beautiful. Lovely sailboat. And we're trying to figure out whether that sailboat will actually be able to get under that bridge. Am I looking for the zeros? Or the vertex? Which one? Yeah. How many people vote on vertex? How many people vote for zeros? Yeah. Hey, do I care about this and this? No. I care about whether my mass is going to hit the top of that bridge. This is a real... I use... Oh my god, I've used this stuff in real life. I just real life. When I was a kid... Oh, um, do I have, I have four minutes to do this? I'm going to tell you the story anyway, really fast. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, my, I'm a sailor, right? I grew up sailing all my life, right? My dad's a sailor, and we kept getting bigger boats. And, and his dream, we lived in New York State, Lake Ontario, beautiful lake, great place to sail. You could sail across the lake and be out of sight of land for like an entire day, practically, if you wanted to. And, I mean, if you had no wind, you could be out of sight of land for a long, lot longer. But... Um, but we would go up to the thousand, I mean, his dream as a kid was to own his own sailboat and to sail up to the thousand islands. So you've got, you've got Lake Ontario, right? And up here, there's a river called the St. Lawrence River. And there's thousands of islands in here, literally. And he owns one, actually. My dad owns one up there. And, but that was not back then, he didn't. And, and there is this amazing bridge called the Thousand Island Bridge. And it's very much like the Golden Gate Bridge. It looks like that, only way smaller. But it looks like it. It's really cool. And my was dad like always that? wanted to sail under it. And so we had this Morgan 34. It's a 34-foot sailboat. It would sleep six people. And the mast was really tall, right? And we were sailing towards this bridge. And we're thinking, oh my god, are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? I mean, what if we hit this bridge, right? So we started lowering the sails. I think we had, we had, we had just the jib up. The jib was the front sail, the forward sail, right? And because we thought we could at least let that go if we had to. And then we, we, had, we were ready to turn on the engine if we had to quickly back up. And we're just sort of inching our way 
closer to this thing, and we were going, oh my God, Dad, I don't know if we're going to make it, you know, and we're getting a little closer. You could have stacked three of us on top of each other, and we wouldn't even have touched the thing. It was gigantic. But, you know, your distance perception is ridiculous. <laughs> and, you know, and <clears throat> I mean, everybody else, I'm sure, would probably look at what are these people doing? <laughs> like, but anyway, but we had fun. Anyways, that was a real exciting experience. I always remember that. And that was my dad's dream, and it came true. So anyway, so yes, this is real. This is real life stuff, right? This is real life stuff. I could have figured it out algebraically had I known this. So now I wish, now, next time I do this, I'm going to invite you guys to come on. OK, shoot, I've got one minute to do this. OK, so we got to do this. we got to find the vertex. So we know the axis image formula, x equals negative b over 2a. So immediately, where is my formula? Okay, so my A is this, and my B is this. Yuck. Okay, so negative 0 0.85 over 2 times point, uh, whoops, it's negative, right? Negative 0 0.005. Okay, does anybody have a calculator by chance? Oh, I do. Okay, so I just use my calculator. So I figure, okay, I'm going to just do... I, I know that's going to be negative, and I know that's going to be negative. Negative over negative divides, I mean, becomes positive, right? So I don't have to worry about the negatives at all. I'm just going to do 0.85, with my glasses on, divide by 2, divide by 0.005, equals, I get 85. So x is equal to 85. That's interesting. Oh, that makes sense. X equals 85. All right, so what does that mean? What does that mean? That means from here to here is 85 feet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? That's 85 feet. Is that going to be helpful for me to find my vertex? Right? From here to here is 85 feet. Yeah, that's going to tell me. That's my axis of symmetry. That's my, that's my vertex. That's my x of my vertex. 85 comma something. So now I just plug that into my original equation. So f of, you can do it right at this way if you want. f of 85 is equal to negative 0 0.005 times 85 squared plus 0.85 times 85 plus 1.5. Okay, so we got to figure this mess out. Okay, so we got 85 times that is equal to, ooh, what do you think? Yikes. Okay, times, where's my times? Times 0 0.005 equals, all right, this equals negative 36.125. Okay, plus, that doesn't make sense. What's wrong? B over 2A, negative B over 2A. Negative B over 2A. It works. Okay, whatever. And then plus point, point eight five, point eight five times 85 equals 72.25 plus 1.5. Okay, so let's add these all together. 72.5 plus 1.5 minus 36.125 equals 37.625 feet. So will my sailboat that is 30 feet tall go under that? Yes. My vertex is 30 fat and 37.6. Beautiful. So pretty easy, right? Pretty yeah. straightforward. All you have to do is figure out which question are they asking. Are they asking for the zeros? Yeah. 